Hi, I'm Stephen Han from Archery Supplies. Today we're going to look at the F-155. This is from Jung Sing Lee Archery. Jung Sing Lee? Jung Sing Archery. It comes out of China, so it's a metal riser um, with wood, wood recurved limbs, 66 inches. It comes with a sight um, in the kit. comes with two RRS um, at about 120 Australian dollars. So I'll just show you the finish. It's a nice, bright, shiny red. It also comes in a, um, a blue shiny color. It has a spot there for a clicker and obviously a spot there for your sight. Um, it has two, two holes, one for your plunger button and one if you're gonna bolt an arrow rest onto the bow. So that's where you bolt the arrow rest and then you use the plunger. So it's got everything you need for a, for a competition recurve. Now, like I said, this is 66 inches long. It goes way down in, I think, from 16 pounds way up to probably 34. So it's really aimed at the beginner level bow. Now, at its price point, it comes with about $20 sight, which I'll show you. But I want to compare the rivals in the market up against this bow. And basically, we're going to set this, up, this bow up, shoot it, and see what it's like compared to the rivals. So... Probably the biggest rival up against the Jung Sing Lee is the Toe Point T2 recurve bow. Now in my opinion, it's not as nice a finish as the Jung Sing Lee. You can see it's still shiny. This is a powder coat finish, so it's a dull finish. Um, the Toe Point does come in a whole bunch of different colors. Same sort of limbs, same sort of system. You only have one, um, one hole instead of the two but besides that it's all pretty much the same so you can't use a wrap, wrap around arrow rest with this bow unless you use a lock plunger now this bow sells at about the same price a little bit more expensive than the Jung Sing Lee recurve now obviously the other bow which is going to be big for clubs and big for, for beginners is your wooden riser bow this one's from sf archery or win and win archery so it's a wns optimo this bow sells for about 170 dollars and it has the same limbs same screw on limb system spot here for your um sight no clipper clicker button now the advantage of this bow over the jung sing is it comes in all different sizes so it comes from 48 inches long right up to 70 inches so if you're a six year old you can get this in a very small version if you're a seven foot tall person you can get it in the 70 inch version um, but it is more expensive the wood grip makes it is um wider in your hand grip so it's more prone to i'm going to say talking and the metal grip the metal grip here is narrower, so you could put your hand in, in, the, in the correct position straight off. Cut away of sight riser, so you can get more sight picture when you shoot. So to me, this is a preferable bow to the wood riser, unless you particularly want the wood look, or you're a particularly small person. So this to me is suitable for someone from 10 right through to adult, and it's a good bow to start you off and use your build up your strength to get you through the beginner stage. Now what I want to look at is the basic kits. So the biggest selling bow I'm going to say is the Toe Point R3 and let's look at that. Now it comes in a kit and I will point out that Toe Point do not sell to me any longer whether it's, I did a bad review on them, they say I don't sell enough, whatever the story is, they do not sell to me any, any further, so I cannot get their product. Now, this is the quiver it comes with, and it comes with these fiberglass arrows. So the first thing is, when this clips into your, into your belt, the arrows are gonna fall straight out because they made this cord too long. So this needs to be shorter, or the whole thing needs to be moved up. Now, these arrows, are just a waste of time. They do work for some poundish bows, but they don't have a spine. So for a very light bow, around a 16 pound bow, these arrows will work. Um, now, I would always say the kit sells for about $200 and the bow sold for about 120. So it's about $80 worth of accessories. 
Now, it did come with a basic sight, which is worth about $20. It came with a little set of Allen keys, which is, you know, worth a couple of dollars. The arm guard to me and the finger tab were very low quality. Um, it also came with a bowstring, and our bowstring is worth $10. So the bow itself is $120, sight $20, $140, bowstring is $10, $150. Um, for me, it was always like, uh the quiver if I if I put two arrows in the quiver does it work well it kind of works but it's still you know once you start to walk it's getting ready to fall out so to me there's always a bit of a question the kit versus the bow by itself but that's the biggest selling item I had in my store now I sold literally hundreds of those bows and I can't sell them anymore I still have a few left but I can't sell them any longer now maybe that I started buying the Jung Sing and Toe Point got annoyed but I don't know but anyway they won't sell to me so hence I have a problem now if I have a warranty concern with Toe Point because I just can't get them so Okay, so this is the kit that Jung Sing the 155 comes with. Oh, now the, the R2 did come with a um, arrow rest, a little flipper arrow rest, which was a complete waste of time because it came with no plunger button. So we used to just stick a little stick on arrow rest to the bow. So the bow comes with a string, which is worth $10. Oh, that was part of the thing. The R2 comes with a string. It comes wrapped. So there's your sight there, it's assembled. It's not a bad little sight, you know, it's worth around $10, $15. I was looking for the other RRS, so it comes with a little stick on RRS. There's a little adhesive for it, 3M adhesive. Or, so the sight was already screwed on for this bow. Or it came with this little screw on arrow rest here. Now this arrow rest is perfectly fine to use. It's obviously too far out there. You want your arrow to be dead in the center of the grip of the bow. So you'd screw this one in to make it work. I'll just sort of screw it in to make sure this is uh, suitable for use with this bow. I find often with Chinese, especially with the toe point, when they're hunting bow, they provide an arrow rest for the bow, which is not suitable. Um, because when you shoot fingers, the arrow comes out left to right. Um, as opposed, like with this one here, they've obviously put the arrow rest in the wrong slot and they put it on the forward one instead of the back one. That's just because the people wouldn't know what they're doing who fit the item, which sounds like really condescending, but unfortunately the people working in the factory tend not to be archers. So that's as far in as I can get that arrow rest. And I'm going to say the arrow is too far out to the left without even assembling the bow. It's definitely too far out to the left. Now I set up one this morning and with the stick on arrow rest it was pretty much spot on straight from the factory. So. What we're going to do is we're going to set up um, this bow and then I'm going to shoot it. Um, so I'm going to show you how to set this up. I'm going to shoot it and we're going to see how well I shoot with a basic $120 bow. The arrows I'm going to shoot, so I can compare like and like, we're going to shoot some Zilliums, which are cheap carbon arrows. They're from Win and Win because they're not the, they're not the fiberglass, which are just terrible. They're kind of, like the Win and Win Zillium Arrow is a good carbon arrow, but it's not something I would shoot. And of course, it kind of doesn't sound right, but it comes spine. So what that means is it flexes a certain amount. So it is suitable for the bow, where the fiberglass ones really are not suitable, if that makes sense. I would always recommend higher quality arrows, um, just so you improve your accuracy. But the Zilliums, I think, are going to shoot fine. So let's test them out. 
the minus on the Xeliums, which I'm going to tell you about. It has a glue on point which goes over and it's always maximum draw length. So if you want to cut the arrow shorter, you can't. But a more expensive, the Xelium sell for about $5 an arrow. A more expensive arrow is going to cost you around $10 an arrow. So I'm going to try and keep the price of this kit down to around $150 odd dollars, um, $160. So you can start shooting at a budget, $160. Same price as the R2, but shoot better with it. So let's set this up um, and go shoot and we'll see how well I shoot. Okay, so I'm ready to, to assemble a bow. Um, and I know this is a really boring part, but I get so many people get this part wrong that I'm gonna show you how to do it. I can't tell you how many times people get the bow assembly wrong. So you unbolt the limbs, doesn't matter top and bottom, they are marked lower and upper and the answer is generally no and when I say generally no, there will be some people say the bottom limb is a little bit higher or lower in poundage than the top, I think they're identical and when I've gone to the factory they have been identical so look I'm not going to argue with someone that poundage is one pound heavier on the bottom, top and bottom, like I said when I've gone to the factory they've always been, they measure the limb to make it 32 pounds, they stick, a, they stick a sticker on which says upper and lower. It's basically the same limb, they're made out of the same machine. There's not an upper and lower limb in the factory when they make it. Um, they spine them, they measure the, the deflection which determines the poundage. It's literally that simple. I'm not saying it's simple to make a limb, but I think people make archery a little bit more complex than it needs to be. So the limb points forward, if that makes sort of sense. And they just bolt together. Now a common mistake people make is they put the limbs facing the other way and then go, well, the thing doesn't work. No, it doesn't work that well. This bow is called a recurve because you're flexing the limbs backwards. Like so, now this little lip there encourages the arrow to stay on the bow if you twist your hand. So if you twist your hand like this as you're pulling back and this finger here touches the arrow, the arrow will try and pull itself off. This is a hardy rest so it will basically make it harder for the arrow to come off the bow if you're not shooting correctly. So now with the string I'd recommend always using a bow stringer so you don't twist the limbs and all that. I'm not going to show you how to use a bowstring. Bowstringers cost about $10 and let's say we're going to throw one in the kit. Um, but they're well worth having. So now the strings. The strings are actually nicely made. You'll see two sides of the loop. This is a bigger loop. The bigger loop goes to the top. The smaller loop goes to the bottom. The string itself is actually quite, it's quite, it's quite well made. There's, I would have no issue with this string at all. It is Dacron. You'll shoot better with fast flight. It was faster with fast flight, but for a beginner, it's perfectly, perfectly fine. This is a 32 pound bow. I'm going to try drawing it back. You can see the limb tips. The string flexes over a bit. Um, it feels smooth all, all the way through. Like it, it feels fine. Now you can buy replacement limbs for these bows and I'm going to guess a number. These limbs are the same as on all those bows um, that I mentioned before, the wood ones and all that, all the same limb. These are not an international fitting limb. International fitting limbs clip in. These are a screw in limb. So what we're going to do now is put some little brass knocking points on the string here. Um, and we do that at 90 degrees. Okay, so I put the knocking points on the string just there. Now the arrows I'm shooting, are these are little zillium arrows um, from Win and Win. They're about five dollars an arrow. Um, now the spine is critical for a recurve. The spine is how much the arrow flexes. Now I've chosen 800s for 32 pounds. So if I was, let's say, getting a 20 pound bow, it might be something like 1100s or a thousand. So something more flexible. If the arrow is too stiff for the bow, it will not flex around the riser. 
and you'll get lots of wear. If it's too flexible, it will bend too much and it'll whack and it'll hit the riser and you'll have all sorts of problems, which is the problem with the toe point fiberglass arrows because they're very, very light. And when you shoot a heavier poundage, they just flex too much. And in fact, it's quite dangerous. So let's see. Now I haven't sighted this bow in. We're just going to take a first shot. Now when you're taking your first shot, always be up close to the target to see how it all goes. And I purposely have not sighted this bow in. Um, so we're standing about five meters away from the target. Um, I'll just get my poodle back from the target. Mother, come on, back here. Come on down. All right, so I think she's safe. So let's try a shot and see where it goes. Now the first thing is I can't see where the sight pin is. So we're going to move the sight down a little bit. Now with a longer riser like the international fitting limbs, the sight window, which is the distance here, is larger. I still can't see the sight pin. I think this arrow is going to shoot high. And what that means, if you were shooting this in a, in a club and you are shooting short distance, you'd have to aim below the target. It'll probably be okay at 20 meters, but at this sort of distance, the arrow will probably shoot high. And you see how high that hit. It missed the target and hit the little yellow target above. So what I'm going to do, based on that, I'll aim the yellow target below the target that I'm aiming at so I can hit the middle. But at 20 meters it'll be fine. Now there's no marks on this arrow rest where I'm shooting from that first shot. It's very important if you're getting marks on your bow when you're shooting recurve, the setup's not quite right so the arrows are probably not quite right and not flexing out around the bow as they need to. Or they are too, or they're flexing too much and causing strike on the bow. Now I did have a person in my club shoot with a plunger button, which was too light on his bow, and the arrows would come in and whack the front of the riser here and actually crack the arrows. So. It's very important that if you have an issue and you detect it early that you fix the problem. Not just keep shooting and keep breaking the arrows. Actually, I think I'm shooting pretty well. I'm like, I'm liking this a lot. Now I'm not shooting with an arm guard. If you whack your arm, then buy an arm guard, they're about $5. For me, if I can get away without shooting an arm guard, it's good because it tells me if my technique is correct or not correct. So the, cor uh, the correct position is like so, so my hand grip is like there, and I should have clearance through here. Now I do get strike with my win and win TFT rise and my $2,000 recurve. My PSE recurve I didn't get strike with, but I do with my new TFT. It just comes past and gives me a little nip, so I, I have to shoot with an arm guard most of the time with that bow. This bow is not hitting my arm. The grip feels nice and natural. Bow feels really nice to shoot. And what, it's a 100, $100 bow with a side $120. I'm shooting $5 arrows. This bow is pretty good. Now the question, the question you've got to ask is how much better is it going to be a more expensive bow? So Jung Sing Lee 
Why do I keep calling it Jiang Sing Lee? Jiang Sing have an international fitting riser. It sells for about $120. Uh, for the riser, so the riser is physically longer, so you've got more sight window. So if I was shooting, instead of aiming at the bottom target, I could actually be aiming at, actually at the target. The limbs clip in instead of screw in. They're foam limbs from Jung Sing Lee, so they're foam instead of wood. Um, I think about 130, I think the riser might be 120, the limbs are about 130, roughly. $250 versus... 120 so is it worth spending the 250 versus 120 on a bow I don't know is the answer it depends on your budget for me it's for me it's clearly worthwhile because international fitting limbs are much quicker to load you just clip them in the foam is not subject to, to twisting and talking that a wood limb is subject to wood limbs are subject to twisting temperature con temperature issues um, but this bow like a hundred dollars what are you like you want to try target archery you buy one of these buy yourself some arrows that was just a poor shot that wasn't like a bad shot as such I just didn't aim in the center of the target And what this enables you to do is to get stronger with this type of bow. Um, if you don't like the bow after you, well, if you build it up, if you build up and you go, well, I want to go heavier limbs, you can either buy yourself heavier limbs or just sell the bow off. You paid $100 for the bow, you sell it off to someone in the club for $50. And so it's cost you $50 to shoot a bow for so many months while you get strong. I'm shooting so well with this bow, it's... And my $5 arrows. I'm shooting so well, let's go and have a look. Okay, so I'm up here at the target. There's my first arrow in the thing. Now... This one here, I didn't aim, I aimed there for some reason because I really can't see the center of this target because it's blocked out by the sight window here. But this group, it's awesome, really good. Now, there is nothing wrong with the toe point R2 bow. The arrows are just throw them away because they're just garbage. The quiver is a little bit questionable. But this, you buy this bow, $120, you buy $5 arrows. You can go shoot and you can shoot really well. Now, if you take if you take this up as a sport and you go, look, I'm really liking shooting arrows. I've got a target at home, I'm shooting every day. You can buy yourself better arrows. Now, why you want to buy better arrows? These knocks here, I shoot knocks at home in the last week i've shot seven well i've shot seven pins off so i shoot heaps of knocks off but i shoot pins off and what a pin is this little metal thing that goes in the back here and you push your knock onto it, it stops your breaking arrow now i have shot these arrows before when i first started shooting recurve archery i shot these arrows and I broke them. And when I say I broke them, I Robin Hooded the actual arrow straight down the back end, broke the arrow, which is why I use a pin system now in my current arrow. So a more expensive arrow is going to cost you around $10 to $15 each. If you can afford it, it's well worth doing. But for $5, get you started. At a club, you're not going to Robin Hood your arrows because you're shooting at a further distance. But at home, like I shoot, I shoot a lot of arrows at 18 meters and I'm just hammering my arrows. So 
if I was to shoot these arrows at home, I'm just going to break them because I'm going to Robin Hood the arrow. But for a beginner, these are not too bad. You buy yourself, and I'm not pointing at this, at this finger tab, buy yourself a little nice finger tab. SF have them for about $20, which has the finger spacer. It has all the little, has the shelf, about $20 good value and you're shooting so a $20 finger tab $5 arrows $120 bow that's all you need to get started and you're going to shoot like a champion um, do I need stabilizers stabilizers are going to improve your archery no question about it they're probably around 5 to 10 percent it stops you shaking balances the bow but like that there is awesome. It gets you started. You're shooting well. If you can shoot like that at a club, you're going to be back shooting with people who have been shooting for a long period of time at an archery club. So I'm really, really happy with that. I think the bow looks nice too. And just going back to the 25 inch riser versus the 23 inch, um, the 23 inch riser here. The 23 inch riser is more suitable for kids, um, a little bit lighter than 25 inch riser. I would prefer a 25 inch riser for that bigger sight window. So I've got more sight view of the pin. This little thing here that I'm aiming at, the little pin. Um, so I'd prefer the 25, I'd prefer foam limbs, but at $250 versus $120, dollars to get you started in archery, I'd be going the cheaper option for sure. Get yourself the $5 arrows. Uh, win and win. It's called, anyway, the win and win finger tab, which is $20. Grab that. That's an awesome little finger tab. I use that for ages. I only went to the expensive one because I needed more padding on my fingers um, because I went up in poundage. So, and that's it. You just go shoot. Now, going down the road when you've been shooting for a while you're going to change your arrows get yourself some decent arrows and change the sight change the arrows put a plunger on the bow all this stuff will help you along the way but that's further down the further down the track just get shooting build muscles build technique um and have a bit of fun doing it i'm stephen hand from archery supplies i hope that's been helpful thank you bye